<clears throat> right, something we are looking to include <clears throat> this year, um, some recent research, <clears throat> which has been um, done by um, a group um, by, headed up by Robert Lamberts. He's designed a <coughs> some maximal cycling test. Um, and I hate the word test because I'm, I'm sure as soon as you see, you see test in the training um, description, you go, oh no, it's a test. Um, but it's really just to test your restfulness. And a few of you have already been doing this for a couple of weeks and um, it's um, already throwing up some interesting patterns. What the Lambert Submax cycling test does is it's, um, it's a 17 minute protocol which you can actually use as a warm up to a session. Um, so by doing it once a week, maybe as a warm up to a turbo session, um, it allows us to track the relationship between the power output you're putting out and the heart rate that's coming back. The clever thing about this is you actually set the work that you do by heart rate. So if you know your maximal heart rate, which you will do by doing a ramp test um, in, in the mobile lab, you get a maximum heart rate and stage one you work at 60% of that figure for six minutes. You then work at 80% of your maximum heart rate for another six minutes. And then finally you work at 90% of your maximum heart rate for three minutes. And you then sit still, that's the bit people are finding hard, sitting still, for 90 seconds after the test and we can see how quickly your heart rate is recovering after that as well. So, just under 16, 16 minutes, it's not too, too <coughs> onerous, but it actually requires a little bit of skill and this is what some of you are finding. It will take time for you to, to manage this, um, particularly getting that heart rate and power right. Um, this is a, um, a file from, from someone who's done this fairly recently and I'm just going to talk you through some tips really to get this right. So you've got the, the black region, so this is the 60%, 80% and 90% of heart rate max and this bit here is the heart rate recovery. So what we're doing is we're taking an average at the final five minutes because you know what it's like, it takes you a little bit of time doesn't it, to get that power right at the beginning of each block. So tips to get this right, firstly know what your heart rate max is and work <coughs> out your target heart rates um, based on that. So it's important to have a fairly recent measurement of your max heart rate. The difficulty here for some of you is, I know this time around we've had some different heart rate maxes come out, and that's related sometimes to the degree of freshness of what you've been doing. So don't worry about that, we'll make sure um, that we, we tailor that accordingly. So know what heart rates you're trying to hit. Even write them on a post-it note before you get on the, on the turbo. Second thing, hitting the intensity to bring about the target heart rate. Okay. You can see on the lower intensity, there's less of a less of a blip. This is the reason why we don't include that first minute in the averaging. Okay, so it takes a little bit of time to, to settle out. Really hard to get it accurate up at the 90% um, heart rate target. Um, this is very, very common because people think, oh, I've only got three minutes to get my heart rate up to 90%, and they go quite hard to get the heart rate up quicker. It's inevitable that's going to happen early on. So don't worry over the first few weeks, like I say, there's a lot of skill involved in getting this right. But over a few weeks, you'll know roughly what power you're going to need to get that heart rate in the right, in the right ballpark figure. So um, just try and minimise that overshoot of power if we can. Keep the cadence as constant as possible. I think everyone is becoming aware of how much high cadence stuff drives the heart rate up. Um, so if you can, select a cadence you can use. Get the gearing is a hard thing here. Get the cadence right, keep that as constant as possible. Yeah, you can see here a little bit of a, an overshoot in the cadence. Um, so just make sure you keep it as fluctuating to a lesser extent as possible. Number four, making sure you collect 90 seconds of heart rate recovery data. This is difficult on some systems because SRM boxes, power taps, they tend to go to sleep if you're not pedaling. Um, and I'm telling you to stack, to sit still. So my, the only way I've found around it um, is if you've got a speed sensor, attach it to the back wheel, so you're, your back wheel's still spinning, 
there's no more brakes on a turbo. Um, so your back wheel's still spinning, and most of the time the boxes stay awake. If for any reason they're not, just mentally make a note of your heart rate. It's 30 seconds, 60 seconds, and 90 seconds. So at least we can get a, some time points here. Number five, it's always about saving the best till last. Remember this one. It's about replicating the conditions each week as closely <coughs> as you can. There will be times when you can't. And um, Chris, that was a good example, wasn't it, the other week when you had to go, unfortunately, to Paris for a couple of days. Um, oh, no. Chris had to get up. He did his first week at 10 o'clock in the morning. And we were trying to work out what would be the best time for him to repeat it the following week because he was, he was then going to be away. So we discussed it and we, we thought, well, at least by doing it early Sunday morning, it might be four hours earlier before he got on the train, but he did his at 6 a.m. rather than doing it in the evening, which might be an even bigger discrepancy. But even then, for the same heart rate, his power was 30 watts lower. 30 watts lower. So that's going to be huge when I'm looking across the year. I'm thinking, <coughs> what was that 30 watt blip? In, you know, and I'm thinking, oh, is he ever trained? Oh no, he went to Paris. So you know, it's, it's all about trying to keep the time of day the same, hydration the same, eaten. Um, and this is remember, this is all about us trying to pick up some very subtle differences in your heart rate response. So the more you can keep things the same week by week, the better. Okay, temperature is really difficult to control. And I don't suggest you get thermometers in your room to check, but. At least keeping it as much as you can. Um, what you're wearing, you know, sometimes you might. Um, I've got some people who train out in their in their garage in minus temperatures during the winter. So you might have different levels on, which can affect the sweat rate. So just keep in mind as constant as you possibly can. Are there any questions on the Lambert stuff? Because I know <coughs> you've been trying this. Are there any things that have cropped up in the first couple of weeks that some of you haven't had it yet? Because you haven't had time to incorporate this in a busy schedule, which just not been appropriate, but we will get there with, with most of you. Any questions? What's the frequency? Sorry? Weekly? Is it? Yeah, we're, um, we're, we're doing it weekly simply because it's a short period of time. It acts as a good warm up. You know, you're getting higher out nice and high, so it's actually quite good to put to, at the beginning of the turbo session. Um, so we're going for weekly because I think it's only really weekly you'll get an idea of getting a good baseline of, of data. If you measure it every block, four week block, you might miss when things changed. So by doing it weekly, we think it's enough resolution to get some ideas of, of what's going on. 